1933, Robert Haven Schaufler, an Austrian-born American author, cellist, music critic, and soldier, published a biographical book-length sketch of Johannes Brahms. The book was entitled The Unknown Brahms. Schaufler's writing was based in part on his interviews with and correspondence from various musical personalities who knew Brahms. One section of Schaufler's book documents Brahms' encounter with the banjo and with ragtime music. Schaufler quotes Arthur Abel, an American violinist and the author of Talking with Composers, a book in which Abel interviewed Brahms at length. In addition to Brahms, the encounter with Abel in the 1890s involved the composer's friend, cellist Julius Klengel, and also one of Klengel's cello students, a young American woman identified elsewhere only as Mary X. In his book, Schaufler wrote, quote, Mr. Arthur M. Abel, an American violinist, was one of the few who could make the master talk intimately about his own work, unquote. Schaufler then quoted Abel, who stated, quote, A year before Brahms died, he asked me whether I played the banjo. No, I replied. Why do you ask? Brahms replied, because at Klingel's I met an American girl who played for me on that curious instrument, a sort of music which she called ragtime. Do you know this? Then Brahms hummed the well-known tune which goes to the words, If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Well, the master continued with a faraway look in his eyes, I thought I would use not the stupid tunes, but the interesting rhythms of this ragtime but I do not know whether I shall ever get around to it. One of Brahms' biographers, the German author and music critic Max Kalbach, also documented this meeting between Brahms, Klengel, and the banjo-playing Mary X. In his eighth-volume study of Brahms' life and music, Kalbach related the same story as told to him by Julius Klengel. Klengel placed the encounter in January 1895. Abel said to Schaufler that he, Abel, spoke with Brahms a year before Brahms died. Brahms died in April 1897. So the after-dinner banjo concert took place somewhere between January 1895 and mid-1896. Max Kalbach wrote, Brahms was a dinner guest at Klingel's home, and the cello student Mary X was also present. After dinner, Klingel directed his student to fetch her banjo, an instrument Brahms had never heard of. Of African origins, it was introduced to America by the Negroes. The Negro accompanies his songs and dances with a banjo. And Miss Mary found the opportunity to learn the skill from the source. Brahms was astonished to find the primitive instrument so versatile and expressive. He examined it carefully and remarked in the course of conversation that he now understood where his friend Dvorak 
had gotten the melodies of his American compositions, unquote. The two lines of music that Brahms hummed to Abel, the notes that go to the words, if you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me, they belong to the song, Hello, My Baby. This song by Howard and Emerson was first published in 1899 by T.B. Harms Company in New York. At first glance, that date, at least a year and a half after Brahms' death, might call into question whether the notes that Brahms hummed to Abel were in fact the notes from Hello, My Baby. There is really no conflict here. The date of publication in New York may have been years later after the song was written and made popular in vaudeville and in traveling minstrel shows, both of which were at their height in the 1890s. In the late 19th century, countless songs were introduced in minstrel shows and vaudeville years before they were commercially published. Major music publishers in New York, like T.B. Harms, would often publish songs that were already proven hits with the public, as performed by headliners on the stage. Joseph E. Howard, the composer of Hello, My Baby, was already a veteran trooper of 22 years of age when his song was first published. He began singing in saloons at the age of eight. And by age 11, he was a boy soprano in a touring show. In 1894, at age 17, he met Ida Henderson, who would become his second wife and his songwriting partner. Consequently, it is possible that the two wrote Hello, My Baby together as early as 1894, and that Joe Howard made it widely popular in vaudeville a year or two before Julius Klingel's American cello student, Mary X, played the banjo for Johannes Brahms. When the song was finally published in 1899, it sold more than one million copies. One cannot help but wonder what sort of ragtime Brahms might have composed if he had not died a year after hearing Mary X play the banjo and telling Abel of his intention to make use of ragtime rhythms in a new work. What would a rag composed by Johannes Brahms have sounded like? Such a piece might have changed the course of musical history, making jazz international and not strictly American. And who can say, had Brahms composed the ragtime, making the genre respectable, today we might all be singing Die Blauen. Since Brahms is no longer with us, to answer this provocative question by composing an original rag, I decided to compose one for him, for symphony orchestra. To recall the after-dinner concert in Klingel's home, I have incorporated the banjo as soloist. Also, the piece quotes, Hello, my baby, several times. For the musical detectives out there, there are also a host of musical quotes from various works by Brahms and from other composers' ragtimes. Can you spot them all? Here now is my speculative piece, the Johannes Brahms rag. On the final melodic phrase, 
just imagine Brahms playing piano in a bordello on the docks of Hamburg, as he reportedly did in his youth. I can imagine him singing. Und das ist der Ende von Johannes Brahms' Rage.